Hello everyone, welcome to our new tutorial on item registration with GPOS ERP. Now, uh, just as I've said, we are going to show you how to register a new item while using GPOS ERP. And uh, here we are at the dashboard. So once you log in into the dashboard, you have this particular quick link or shortcut button here, which is uh, named new item. You click on new item button and it will automatically take you to the item registration page. In the item registration page, we have got these two buttons, uh, which I'll just quickly mention. Manage item button uh, will take you to the item list. Yes, I've seen. So this is general item list, you'll see that there. And we have got this particular green button called Upload Items. And this particular Upload Items will give you this particular pop-up. And of course, with the guide given here, you can be able to access the CSV template by just clicking uh, CSV template button, this green button here. This particular green button will give you a CSV template which you pre-fill and then attach it here that is in this particular form input element, and then click import. So that is first how to import items into GPOS. Now, this aside, we want to see how now to register item one after the other, that is one by one. In this particular form, you'll be required to fill it. And of course, note that all the third fields, input fields, that is the input fields with asterisks in red are mandatory fields. And of course, the ones which do not have the asterisks are as well important, but not mandatory. That is, if you don't have them, you can just ignore or just skip them. Now, we are starting with the category. And of course, you'll see this particular drop down list. These are really pre filled category uh, categories for this particular demo. So, if you want to know how to register any item category, visit our tutorial on item configuration and you'll see how to register a new category. And a snapshot will just come to the configuration section. And of course, you'll find the categories here. You click on that, it will give you the categories list and a form to register a new category. Now, select on a category. So that I'll skip brand, I don't have a brand. Uh, if I had Coca-Cola, I'll do Coca-Cola, if I had Pepsi, and of course, any other brand that uh, you want to work with. Yeah, and of course, that is also registered under item configuration. Then I'll say maybe uh, I'll go with Fanta. And then I'll select the units. Now, this is the item name that will be displayed at the point of sale section or terminal. So give it a name that is understandable to both the clan and of course to your uh, employees or staff. So that is the item name. I'll have units. This is the measurement unit of all this particular item. So if it's in crates, if it's in bottles, if it's in packets, if it's in kilograms, cages, pieces, etc. You'll just select the unit here. So uh, I don't know whether I have bottles here. Oh, yeah, I have an abbreviation here. And then I'll select on attributes. If I have attributes, I can just put this particular attributes here. And of course, this particular form allows you to select multiple attributes. Right now, I don't have attributes. Tax type, of course, uh, soda, any hotel item, and say all of them. If you are doing a bar and restaurant or you are doing a hotel, everything is taxed. I'll do VAT. If I don't want it to be taxed, I'll choose exempted in this particular case. And of course, the color of the item, you can give it any color. If you don't have colors here, set this in the setting and configuration section. Of course, you'll see the, uh, the colors here. And of course, you see the attributes here, you'll see the brands here, you'll see the tax types here as well. And the item you need to also see this here. So uh, that aside, I can attach the uh, image of this particular item. So it's very easy. Just attach the image of the item there. And then uh, if you have got serial number, SKU barcode, you can put it here. If you don't have leave it blank, the system is auto-generate for you. 
and the backward. And then we have what the radar level, which is important. This particular radar level is what will help the system notify you when this particular item needs restocking. That means if the quantities hit the radar level, then automatically you'll find a notification. Of course, first from the dashboard we saw in our earlier tutorial uh, on the summary on items which needs restocking displayed in the dashboard. Then uh, I'll just maybe mention this of uh, three or four. Availability is also how to confirm whether this particular item is available for sale or not. Uh, is quantity predefined? Also very important. This uh, is what will make this particular item, item countable or not countable. For example, for Fanta, and I'll just say this is Fanta 300 ml. You say so. For Fanta, I'll say it is a countable product. So the quantity is predefined. For things like maybe tea, if I'm not using the rest of the section, which is very important also for any inventory control management. If I'm not using that and I wanted to reach just tea as an item or uh, ugali as an item, then I'll mark their quantities as not predefined. Yeah. Any item which has to go production must have their quantities not predefined. That means they said no. So for soda, I'll say yes. And of course, we have what class. So is it for sale? Yes, this is for sale. So I have to check that. If I don't check this, then it will not be available at the point of sale terminal. It will not be queried. Is it for purchase? Yes. If I don't check this, then I'll not be able to do procurement for this particular item that is found at 300 ml. Is it for main shop or bar? I'll say yes. Why? If I don't do this, this is what will separate uh, items that are meant for the kitchen uh, and of course for the counters and bar for restaurants. For any other businesses, I'll have it remain checked. If it's a retail business or also business, I'll remain I'll have it remain as checked because I want always I want it to be printed always whenever I make an order or I punch a sale. Then you have for this particular last section, which will allow you to define the buying price, that is the unit buying price for every soda, and uh, that is per shillings. Maybe give it a markup, do it in a markup of 20% or 50%. If I don't work with percentages, then I can just come here and say my final price for this particular soda will be 50 shillings. And then I'll have my opening stock, maybe I have four at the moment. And of course, if I have got any other description, I'll just say uh, 50. And of course, market is active. If it is not active, it, it's like a dormant item or a suspended item. And that means you not uh, have it for sale or for purchase. And then just hit on the save button. So that is how to register an item. Now, I've got a slight error that you can see in my screen. And that means, and that reads, the image you attempted to upload doesn't fit into the allowed dimensions, correct? So that means uh, you will have to do approximately 400 by 400 pixels for the system to accept these particular images that you'll try to upload over and over again. So just a quick walkthrough again on that. So I'll just click on solar button. That's that. Here the level was four. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that was 30. That was 50, and I have four in my stock, and I said test it and save. That soda is automatically registered, and the system will redirect me to the item list. That is the general item list where I'll see my soda. So if I just say search for Panta uh, 300 ml. Yeah, I'll see my Fanta 300 ml. Uh, we have got Fanta Passion. Oh, so we have got a lot of Fantas registered here. Let me just type soda. Yeah, 
I have my soda 300 ml, not Fanta, but soda 300 ml, registered here, 30 shillings, 50 shillings. That is the happy hour price, and that is it. So I have got my particular soda here written, uh, or listed in this particular item list. Now that is how to register an item. And if I want to edit, update, or change details of these particular items, I can, of course, always come to the item list, and item list is just under products. This is the items. This is the general item list. I'll find this particular soda. Of course, if I search for it here, it will automatically be filtered out. So let me just type that to completion. Soda 300 ml. So I have got my soda 300 ml registered here. I can uh, uh, edit the buying price. I can edit the max price. I can define whether their quantity is predefined or not. I can expand on that and click on edit or delete button to uh, carry out those particular two options. So if I click editor view button, it will open me the profile of this particular item where I can now do very many things, uh, including attaching a, an image, creating byproducts, generating serial, and uh, that is a uh, serial for recording or labeling, and even editing these other details which I registered during registration process for this particular item. So that is how to register an item with GPOS ERP, and of course, how to edit an item registered with GPOS ERP. <clears throat> One more thing that uh, I'll want to explain is how to ensure that this particular item is available in my in my multiple stores. In the system, if I go back to the dashboard, <coughs> if I go back to the dashboard, you'll find that I have three stores registered in this particular system. And of course, this particular system, just as we've said over and over again, it can run more than one particular store or selling point. Now, you can have a different set of items sold or stocked in a given store, which is different, of course, from another store. So if I go to store X and store Y, I'll maybe have my soda in store X and not my, have my soda stored or sold in store Y. It's very possible in businesses. Now, the process of availing this particular soda in store X, Y, and Z is called redistribution of items. And how do I ensure that this particular item is available for sale or for stocking in a given store? I'll have to do something called redistribute items. To redistribute items, you will come to the item or product section, that is uh, products in bracket inventory. I'll click on stocks. So after clicking on stocks, there is this particular button called redistribute items. Now, if I click on that, it will give me a list of all the stores which are available. And of course, this particular uh, form input called get items. So for example, if I want the soda to be available in the garden store, I'll click on garden store and I'll search for the soda 300 ml. That is the product 283. And I can, of course, add several items here, which I want associated with that particular store. So I'll only add for now soda. We have got, of course, an all button and all item selection here. If you want to add everything, just select all and everything will be sent to or associated with that particular store. I'll add soda and remove the iPhone tablet and to my soda 300 ml. We have all these particular options, that is distribute, rollback, override store. Distribute is to do the transaction of mapping this soda to garden store. Rollback, if checked, is to undo the process that the distribute option does. That means if I already associated this soda to I uh, to garden store, and I want that particular action undone. Then I'll select rollback. Then you have override stock. Override stock is to allow you 
override the stock that is already existing in the garden store. For example, if my soda has already been distributed to this store or associated with this store, and I needed to update it with the initial opening stock, of course, registered during item registration, then I'll choose on override stock. It will update it to the initial opening stock as at the time the item was being registered. Then, of course, I have got the last section here called if if distribute, that means if my first selection, then would you like to transfer this particular item with the current opening stock? Yes. That means if this is a new distribution, remember it is not overriding. This is a new distribution. Overriding stock happen if the distribution had been done earlier on. So if it is a new distribution and I want or I want to carry this particular distribution with the initial opening stock, then I'll click a yes. If I don't want to do that, then I'll just click a no. So I'll just leave it to yes and then click on submit. Nice. So once that is done, I'm so sure that part, my particular item called Soda 300 ml has been distributed to the garden store. How do I confirm that? Just within this particular page, we have got this particular select option here, and I'll select the garden store. Once I select garden store, it will get me the, all the list of items in the garden store. I'll search for my soda. I search for my soda 300 ml, and of course you can see my soda 300 ml is already registered here, and of course with the mask price, and of course with all this particular information. So that is how to redistribute an item to a given store. Thank you.